Hi everybody, I'm Stu with Main Street Mower and we're going to do a video owner's manual on the Toro 30 inch Time Master. What we're going to do is we're going to do a walk around of this mower as if you just got one delivered from a dealer or picked up from a Home Depot. We're going to tell you everything you need to know. So first, locate your bag. And you got some goodies in here. We'll dump them out. You got a side discharge chute. You got a bottle of oil. And you got a manual. Starting with the handles. So first of all, you notice Toro uses blue to accent some special features. And that this mower has personal pace. It takes care of the driving for you. You just simply start walking and the mower starts pulling. I always say it's like you have a dancing partner. And when you stop, it stops. And when you pull it back, it freewheels in reverse. Right here, this blue is to engage your blades. When you crank this mower, you pull the rope, the engine will be on, but the blades will not. This is your blade engagement here. So you hit this lever in, it's a safety, and pull this down and you're gonna hear the decibel level come up as your blades come to life. Let go of this, your blades shut off, but not your engine, just your blades. So normally this feature right here is what turns your mower off. Letting go of this puts a brake on your engine and stops your mower. On this one, you don't have a brake. So you have a kill switch right here. You'll hold that down and turn the mower off. And when you let go, it's gonna bounce back to on. This blue feature here is a handle adjustment. Your handle has a low position. There. Position for a taller operator there. It has a vertical storage position. This just makes it simple. It takes up less space in the garage. Some people will hang their bag on it like this. Just increases the square footage on your, on your garage floor a little bit. And then it has a forward position. So if you were putting this into the back of a car, it would make it fit into a van, a SUV, a pickup truck. You can also loosen these handles right here. And this is how it came out of the box. Take the handle down like that. That's as small as it can be. If you were really trying to fit this somewhere compact, you can also drop your wheels down and it compacts it a little bit more as well. All right, so everybody's comfortable with their handle. Press the button, lower, higher. You have vertical. You can loosen this and fold it down. Personal pace is no learning here. You just start walking and you go. This blue lever is, is kind of like the boost button. Say you need to climb a little hill, you can squeeze and you're not waiting on this compaction to put it into drive. And then this is your blade engagement. And this is your kill switch. This is how you turn the machine off. All right, moving down to the wheels, adjusting your height of cut. This mower cuts four and a half inches, so that's the A position. That's quite high. It's much higher than anything 22 on the market, or 21. When you change one side, it changes the other side of the front. You know, go down to one, and then the same in the back. Now there's a lot more weight here in the back, so the best way to do the back really is to kind of take some weight off and then let the weight squash it down. Or going back up, you kind of have to lift it up. You do have a spring-loaded rear axle. It's going to help it go up. Same up front. So there is a page in the manual that shows you what height each letter is at. Most people set that height once and they pretty much leave it there. All right, you also notice in your manual pack is this little fitting right here. This is a washout port. So what you would do is you screw this on your garden hose and then by squeezing back like that, it'll connect to your deck. And then you turn your water on so your water is flowing underneath your deck. And then you stand behind the mower and you crank it. And while it's cranked, you turn your blades on and the blades sling all that water around there and clean all the underbelly of your deck out. What's my recommendation on how and when to use this? It depends on your grass and what part of the country you're in. In Florida, we have a lot of sand, and when you feel up underneath the deck in Florida, 
it's pretty much always clean because the sand is pelting it and knocking everything clean. So this isn't really necessary to bring water into the equation. Other parts of the country have much stickier situation. There's a lot of packed up grass in there and this would be a smart thing to do. Rather than your mower sit with wet grass stuck to it all week long as it dries out, it'd be better to get it wet once and wash all that out of there. Right here is a white sticker and it has a five digit model number. This is a 21199. And then below that is a serial number that's unique to this mower right here. And then next to that is a QR code. So you always have the manual right here with you. On most smartphones, when you pull out the camera and you try to take a picture of this tag right here, a link will appear on your camera screen and you can click that link and it'll take you to a online PDF of your operator's manual. This engine is made by Briggs & Stratton. The rest of the machine is made by Toro, so when Toro's assembling these, they pull this engine off of a crate, set it on, and bolt it into place. If you go into your dealership and you're looking for parts that are contained here, technically, they need this information that's printed on the side of the engine. If you're looking for parts from the engine elsewhere, they need this information that's down here. Now, most good dealers will be able to take this information from the frame and be able to derive what motor you have on here. The prepared person would have both of these before they walk into their dealership. So, we're gonna crank this up. Most of you should be getting these cranked from your dealer, but in the event you aren't, this is all you have to do. It's really not hard. This is 20 ounces of 30 weight oil. It says SAE 30, and this is for a hot engine, air-cooled engine like this. It takes all of this. Five to 10 customers a year come in with an engine that's seized up because they bought it somewhere else and they thought that they were to add oil as they go. This is just like getting an oil change in your automobile. This amount of oil is sitting at the base of the engine and it's sloshing around in the engine. And as your engine runs and accumulates hours, it turns this oil black and and loses viscosity and you need to do an oil change at that point. So I'm just using this dipstick to pop a hole in this foil and then hopefully I don't spill. I don't have a funnel with me but as you can see I'm dumping the whole bottle in which makes it easy and then they want you to check your oil by seating the dipstick all the way in its lowest setting. On the bottom of the dipstick you see two holes. One's a low or an add position the line that's level with the top hole is your full position. So 20 ounces puts it at that hole. Here, little warning about fuel, and it's letting you know that it was shipped without oil in it. We're gonna add some gasoline. Now, I get this question all the time. Inside of this fuel tank is a blue sponge, and it's supposed to be there. You do not have to pull it out. If you think about it, if grass or debris goes down into this tank, this is a gravity-fed fuel system so it's pulling fuel right here off the bottom so if any trash falls in there it's going to end up right here in this fuel line you do have a filter there to protect it but this is just to catch debris as well hold it there on on the top level doesn't hurt anything doesn't affect the volume of fuel that you can put in here but the blue sponge is normal don't worry about it and make sure you have an air filter in place this is something that you're replacing every year or as needed when it gets dirty. If you're using it more, if you're using it in really dusty conditions, the spark plug for this machine, you shouldn't have to do anything with, is located right here. So once a year, we would recommend you replace that as well. And that is, there's a, a rubber boot that covers it. And then you need a long well socket to fit in there and take it out. All right, so we're gonna crank it real quick. You know, you may, may be accustomed to an engine of old that had a primer bulb, or had a choke lever, or it had an on-off. This engine's always in the on position and there is nothing to touch at all. All you do is pull the rope. And it cranks just like that. And when you engage the blades, it won't go until you hit right here. You can hear the blades are on. When you let go, they shut off. 
when you hold the stop button down, the motor stops. If you don't hold that button long enough, the engine still has momentum and when you let go, it cranks itself right back up. So you do have to hold it for a few seconds to let it fully die. You're like strangling the motor to death. All right, so in the setting it's in right now, this chute is closed. This back chute is closed. The bag is off. It's a mulching mower. It's a recycling mower. It's taking the clippings and it's putting them back in and chopping them over and over and over. And what's left behind is just like a grass dust. So you have two options. Any of these are three in one mowers. So they'll mulch or recycle like they are now. They'll side discharge and all you have to do is open this door and put this right in here like so. And then this spring loaded door is applying pressure to keep this in place. If something were to happen to this, you have just high speed projectiles flying out of here and you want to get that replaced before you operate it again. Now the other way of running this would be as a bagger. So if you were bagging, you're going to leave your side discharge chute closed and you're going to remove this plug right here. Now you'll notice there's a handle for your, that fits your hand and there's a thumb release right here. And you have to pull this plug out. You see that sits in there, the blade rides by that when it's up in that hole. And when this door is open, you're gonna notice a little slot here and here. And your bagger, you notice, has a little ear sticking out here and here. So you just set it in like that. And then your door sits on there and that holds that in place. Once you get a little grass in there, that weight of that grass sags down and that holds it in as well. All right, a couple more things that you may need to do. And honestly, beyond this, you need to see your dealer. So if you wanted to do an annual service to this machine, you could do it. You would want to change your air filter. You'd want to change your oil. You'd want to change your spark plug and you want to sharpen or replace your blades. Changing the oil, this is how you do it. You crank the mower up, get it hot, and then you locate your oil dipstick. It's right here. You take that out, and then you have an oil pan ready. Hold it right here under your dipstick fill tube and tip the mower over. Now when the mower is all the way over, it's just gonna sit up like that which I don't want to do long if I'm not trying to drain the oil. That's generally the rule in all walk-behind mowers is that the dipstick's on the right side and when you tip the mower, mower to its side, you tip it to the right side. If you were to tip this mower to the left side, oil from the engine would seep up into your air filter and your carburetor. So if you, if you did it for a really short time, you may just have a lot of smoking and coughing. If you did it for a long time, your air filter would be covered in oil and you'd need a new air filter for the machine to breathe correctly. Uh, then we, we took this off, so we showed you uh, replace your air filter, replace your spark plug, get a socket that's going to fit up in there, pull that cap off. You want to be really careful removing your spark plug. You could cross thread it, and if you do, you just about spoiled your engine. I mean, you need a new head. Uh, but when it comes time for your blades, this mower is really easy because it sits like that. And you're able to come down here with your socket, take these blades off. You know, of course, you'll have to lodge a piece of wood up in here to hold these blades from spinning. Or if you really want to get fancy, you'll buy an impact wrench. You can get those in lithium powered now. And you get your 5.8 socket on there and you just zip them off. These bolts are regular thread, so they are righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. But as you can see, these blades cross paths. So in order to keep them from hitting each other and exploding the mower up, or bending your blades really more practically, is that these blades are timed so that they're perpendicular to each other all the time. You see this blade is this way, and this blade is this way. So when you take the blades off, You'll notice that there's a little spacer sleeve, it's aluminum with two little holes, and you'll want to orient that so that they aren't coming together. You know, sharpening, we have videos on how to sharpen, so you can watch that in another video. But once you're sure your blades are on good and they're nice and flat and level and they're not gonna cross each other's path, because this is in a, there's a synchronized belt here, 
then you're all good to go there. All right, guys, that is the Toro Time Master Video Owner's Manual. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section below and like and subscribe to our channel. We got videos coming out all the time, so we're gonna have more of these video owner's manuals coming out for all of your products. You can ask us for products you wanna know more about. Have a good day.